this is Pastor Troy. We're getting ready to launch our next episode with you. And before we launch that episode, we've got something real new that we couldn't put in the episode, but we want you to see it now. For the first time ever in season three, we have an affiliate advertising partner, and that is slnt.com. And before we launch our show, in just a minute or so, we want to introduce you to them. You'll be finding out more about them this season. But right now, before we launch this incredible show, check out this advertisement from our new partners at slnt.com. You want to be a part of this, and then stay tuned for the next on the dock with Pastor Troy and the gang. Here we go. There are more than 8 billion phones in the world, a fact that threatens your privacy, security, and health. With Silent Pocket Faraday protection, you can regain control over your mobile devices. We get it. Privacy and security are inconvenient topics. And you may feel like you have nothing to hide, but the fact is that in the modern world, your laptop is never really off. Your phone emits a signal, even in airplane mode. And everything from your passport to your credit cards contains RFID. And all of it contains valuable private information that is easily exploited in the wrong hands. Silent Pocket offers a range of products you already use. Wallets, bags, travel gear, laptop sleeves, key cases. But with the added protection of our patented Faraday technology, which turns your devices invisible and safe from the outside world. Many industries, from top business professionals government officials require the use of Faraday products for the day-to-day -day security of them and their staff. They understand that we are constantly at risk and take the necessary steps to prevent future attacks. We offer this elite technology to anyone that values their personal data, and we are proud to offer a premium range that fits seamlessly into your everyday life, providing security without looking like a tinfoil hat. As we learn to live with technology, Silent Pocket stands on the three pillars of privacy, security, and health. Our goal is to provide harmony with mobile technology without risking our most valuable information. We hope you'll trust us to help you do the same. RG every Tuesday and Thursday on the dock with Pastor Troy. We're glad to have you here. We have got a great show for you today. We are all about conversations to propel yourself out of the shallows. Get that faith out of the shallows and into the deep. Take a look at that beautiful picture that my daughter Megan drew. It's sitting on the dock right there in those seats. We're around that cottonwood table right now. We're sitting in these seats. We want you to join us for a little bit of time, whether you're riding in a car, going someplace, listening on a podcast, or sitting someplace. You're sitting with us right now, and we're in the harbor here. You see the little lighthouse to the left there in the picture? I love that lighthouse. Can you show that picture one more time for us up there, Colt? See the little lighthouse she put up there? Hey, when you go out that pass, you get to the deep water. We don't want you to stay in here. We want you to hang out with us a little bit, get filled up, and then get out there and live for Jesus. We're going to put some stuff in your tank today to get you out there and so you can get out there and let Jesus be your captain and get out in the deep. I hope you're joining us today on one of these platforms where you're not listening to us at all. So hopefully you found us on YouTube. Maybe you're on Spotify. Maybe you're on iTunes. But did you know those are our primary platforms? That's where we want you. That's where our metrics are best. But we're also on Google Play. You can listen to us audio there. Facebook, you can watch this video. Roku, you can watch this video. Rumble, you can watch us on video. And SermonNet, that's where our archives are. So you can see all of our shows. You can also see all of our shows on YouTube and Spotify and iTunes. But go there first. Find another one if you want. And we'd love to have you. We have five five social media partners, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Telegram, and Getter. Donna's posting on all those. She's monitoring all those. And uh, we would love to talk to you. Once you find us, hit subscribe, like, notify, tell other people how to find our YouTube channel, our Spotify or iTunes channel, whichever one you do. You guys use Spotify or iTunes? I use Spotify because I'm Detroit. Yeah. Apple Music. Apple, 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 here you go. Hit it again. Apple Music. Yeah, Apple Music. Yeah, Josh's mic's not on. Hit, my, hit Josh's mic. Hey, hey. There you go. Apple Music? Big Apple Music. Big, big Apple Music. Beth, Beth, you ever listen to us on Spotify and iTunes? You're just YouTube. YouTube. You're, you're not on either. Get Beth on. I don't. I have Spotify, but I just actually 
took it off my phone because my phone's too full. Well, mine downloads my Spotify everything. automatically if I'm driving. I'll listen to it because I can't watch the video. Right. But I prefer to watch this on YouTube. And and Rumble's not bad, but I but we like YouTube and that. So use those. Hit subscribe, like, notify, and all those kind of things. My phone's messed up. So yeah. Then. Go to Patreon. Download the Patreon app on your Android or your uh, Apple phone, and find on the dock with Pastor Troy, and you can become a partner or sponsor. There's four levels of partnership. Just looking at that, you can jump in at one of those levels of partnership: five, ten, twenty, fifty bucks a month, and be a supporter of our show. And what we're doing here at On The Dock. There's also three tiers of sponsorship. If you have an organization or a business and we can work along with you to promote your product or what we're doing, we'll do a spotlight on you. There's different levels there and we give you different levels of service there. If you're a Christian business, Christian organization, we would love to work with you. And we're doing a spotlight today. So this show will show you a little bit of what we can do and we can even do so much more. Just check that out at Patreon. You can find that also by going on the doc.org and looking at the donate link that will take you right to Patreon site. We're going to show you something special. SLNT.com right here. Look here. Check out this. This is my Faraday bag. This is cool. This has got my phone in it. Nobody can listen to Chinese Google. Nope. Nobody's listening to me today. Um, someday we'll tell you how we did that at SLNT.com. Use promo code OTD and you can get different versions of their Faraday bags are fantastic. You can also go to www slnt.com backslash discount backslash otd that's our own special page we have all kinds of discounts and shipping and special deals go check that out and be a part of that we are an affiliate with them now i'm going to show you something josh hadn't got the chance to see this josh is in the studio to do our segment today on crown brew we're going to introduce that in just a second but i want you to see this maybe you've seen some of this but we want to run this because it is really cool. They found us and we want to show you what we can do with them. So we're going to bring the video up and I want you to watch our one minute and 30 second commercial so you can learn more about SLNT. Here we go. There are more than 8 billion phones in the world. A fact that threatens your privacy, security and health. With Silent Pocket Faraday protection, you can regain control over your mobile devices. We get it. Privacy and security are inconvenient topics. And you may feel like you have nothing to hide, but the fact is that in the modern world, your laptop is never really off. Your phone emits a signal, even in airplane mode. And everything from your passport to your credit cards contains RFID, and all of it contains valuable private information that is easily exploited in the wrong hands. Silent Pocket offers a range of products you already use. Wallets, bags, travel gear, laptop sleeves, key cases, but with the added protection of our patented Faraday technology, which turns your devices invisible and safe from the outside world. Many industries, from top business professionals to government officials, require the use of Faraday products for the day-to-day -day security of them and their staff. They understand that we are constantly at risk and take the necessary steps to prevent future attacks. We offer this elite technology to anyone that values their personal data and we are proud to offer a premium range that fits seamlessly into your everyday life, providing security without looking like a tinfoil hat. As we learn to live with technology, Silent Pocket stands on the three pillars of privacy, security, and health. Our goal is to provide harmony with mobile technology without risking our most valuable information. We hope you'll trust us to help you do the same. How about that, Josh? Cool. That's pretty good production, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Check this out. I'm, Beth, I couldn't tell you about this in a previous episode, but my new, the new hottest thing is the bottom left corner, the sling bag for the ladies. I guess a guy could wear that, but it looks too shiny for me. But the sling bag is cool. The crossbody looks more dude-like dude across the front, but I love that sling bag. And I think for the ladies, for so much of our stuff, whether it's your, your that will work as your key fob as well. It, it, right now, people can take our, like our challenger. They can... Draw, come up right next to you. I'm sorry, we, we told you we have one. Yeah, they can come up next to you and they can copy your car key and they can just steal your car. From your, they can come to your front porch and steal your fobs while you're asleep your and then drive your car out and get in your car uh, and leave and get in your car and leave. Now that's happening all over right now, certainly. So you want to protect what? that. So even if you just put this <laughs> yeah. in your house at night to keep your keys in, that keeps a maid or somebody coming by. For, uh, it Anybody. Can, they said a UPS guy could be scanning cards and stuff and selling it on, on the side. Oh, and then somebody else is coming back and getting your stuff. We're just in a world when you go through the airports and stuff. It's not that you can't you can't live work with it in there, but you can control where you take it out. But if you're going through an airport like you just came from Florida not too long ago, there's a lot of people that are just sitting there to scam you. Your mom and I about got scammed at a McDonald's in Andalusa last time. There were people hopping around the seats yeah, trying to scam our phones. They were guys. doing our phones. We saw them doing it. And that's what they were doing. They were just sitting they, in the McDonald's because the vacationers driving down the vacationers driving down are there at Andalusia and there's a, 
a two hour dead zone where there's no internet. So what they can do is get your card number on RFD and they can spend all that money between before you get to Destin or before you get back to uh, Birmingham, they have already spent a bunch of money that you can't get text alerts on because your phone's not working well. Wow. They yeah. weren't even eating or drinking anything or trying to cover up what they were doing or we told the manager. And they seem and, to be in on they it. They were to be dealing honest. with them uh, yeah. when we left. Well, let, let's get into this show. I've got myself on the set. I've got Mother Beth here as a co-host. She's over in a cross seat today because she wanted to sit by her son and not no, by me. No, I love my son, but I do not like sitting over here. I can't. Even see <laughs> I know it's not her regular seat. It's not her se not Can't even regular see seat. myself. Yeah, uh, and, and then Colt's on camera, but not on microphone. Colt, our tech produ our tech ninja, is in studio today. Uh, his voice is a little down today, so we don't have him here. And you can reach out info on doc. Info at onthedoc.org and reach out to Donna Kroniski, our executive producer. She'd be glad to help you get linked up to these uh, products and stuff like that. And as always, go to onthedoc.org to find all these links to, to SLNT through our affiliate link. Or if you want to find our donate link for my Patreon, all the stuff you can get there. Platforms are all right there. We're in studio to do a Take It to the Street Spotlight. And our spotlighting Crown Brew. Now, Crown Brew has probably got more time on this set in three years than you can shake a stick oh, at. I'd say. Because we have glasses in studio. We try, Josh, every now and then we even use your coffee mugs. But we mostly use ours because we have our own brand. But we, but we always your, use this. I have one of these. And, and we have it on set. Or one of these. And we, there are so or many these, episodes where we say, we always say, Donna, send them a sponsorship bill. You should be getting a monthly bill because we talk about, matter of fact, the whole Take It to the Streets episode with Take Action Today, we drink your stuff the entire episode. Yeah. Yeah, so my, my people told me that you've done enough free stuff that I owed you a show. You did finally after three years. I get my son in here. You have gotten so much show time, you know. Uh, but but Crown Brew is our ticket to the street spotlight, and uh, Josh gets to be a part of our 184th uh, unique show that we've done. So, son. Yeah. Glad to have you here today. And we are in part one of that. We're going to do two parts here. And we're going to be doing the spotlight and the ethos of the whole Crown Brew Coffee Company. We've got some stuff on the table here. Uh, a great looking show of stuff. You can tell us about that a little bit later and, and point that out. But Josh is uh, Crown Brew Coffee. Uh, I, I guess the word would be owner and master barista. I don't know. Do, <laughs> do you consider yourself? I mean, you've invented so many of your drinks. And I know you have collaboration in there. Yeah. But I would consider you, you're absolutely a master barista. And actually, you know, design some just incredibly unique food. So let me get the basics of it in real quick. Crown Brew Coffee uh, is is a wonderful place. It's open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Oh, Sundays. So beautiful picture. Sundays, that's 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Now you're asking, where is Crown Brew Coffee? Crown Brew Coffee is in Marion, Illinois at 107 East Union Street. And you can go to crownbrewcoffee.com to find them. And I'm going to tell you a little secret, a little early in the show here, but um, you can order online. Yeah. Are you still doing that? Oh, yeah. I, I do it. I order on, listen, I I never I never bump his line because I want my son to do well because someday I'll come live with him when I'm old and I can't live on my own anymore. I, so I, I always tell him I don't want to be a distraction. So I never get in front of anybody in line there, but they can crank through it. But what I learned over, over time was I can order the app and they know me well enough that they just come over and bring it to me now. So <laughs> I order I order on the app when we, I'm in. We tell our regular, that's a hack. It's you, a ha you don't I have to waste you. your time sitting in line. I do. Come in, grab I go it, get right in, grab it's my perfect. seat, and I go grab my seat, and I just order, and then I'll wave them when I come in. They'll see me, and they'll bring it over to me. So yeah. uh, I appreciate don't it. Worry. If, if you're waiting in the line, you're not family. You haven't figured it out. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think I, they know him at Starbucks too. Yeah, oh, I've sure. known him both places. Yeah, and what's funny about we walk in, it's like on Cheers. I don't know if you ever watched Cheers. <laughs> Troy, Pastor it's, Troy, it's where are you going today? Yeah. And what's funny about is everyone. Listen, the Starbucks people love Crown Brew. Oh, this, the whole Starbucks team does. They're some they, of our best customers. When you were closed for that one, one week when <laughs> yeah. you were doing redesign and engineering, yeah, yeah. they were just like all panicked. I'm thinking like, what, what happened to Crown Brew? I said, they're just, just doing it. Like, cool. <laughs> and then the next week, they were closed for something. You know, everybody has to have their resets, you know. <laughs> and uh, they love you guys in there. They know if I'm getting on the interstate, I'll go there. I said, I get on there, but I got to go on the other side of town. And so w I, we have a good balance. It's funny that the, 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 the coffee companies here are all very supportive of each other. Oh, yeah. But uh, Crown Brew is unique. Every one of them tell me to hang at your place yep. every yep. one of them the manager asks me every time how you're doing and that so <laughs> i cannot hide in there either so they have great product there crown brew's got a beautiful beautiful place there uh check that out i'm gonna show you some more pictures in a little while but we'll get into that a little bit deeper in the episode oh, i'll just show you a few more what the heck look at this look at this beautiful location this is my favorite place is back on this couch here i tried to get there people haven't already got it i like that corner seat and i have like have a meeting with somebody else on the other corner seat so i like that. i like that window seat too josh back there 
Sometimes I get that pillow, lean back and work for a while. I love that. That's great. Um, I, 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 Josh, uh, they do incredible stuff. Now we know crown brew coffee, oh, coffee. Brew. Okay. All kinds of unique drinks. And he can talk about those a little bit, but what a lot of people don't realize is they got bougie food, bougie food. Look at, look at these <laughs> amazing toasts. I mean, that's bougie. I, and I took, I take Minley men there and we go eat there. And I, say, men. I do. I take Minley men and say, we're going to go have, we're going to go have toast. They go, what? Yeah. And then they go, man, that was good. And, uh, <laughs> and then you can get bougie drinks. Look at this incredible. I don't know what that is, Josh, but that looks good. You know, that's got some fizz and some stuff to it. And this new, this, this new meal here, this, uh, bagel thing. What is I this one? Dynamite bagel. That. What's oh. that? Dynamite bagel. Golly, it's, it's that's like, yeah, so it's, good. that's like the Chinese dynamite. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, we kind of play with like the dynamite roll. Yeah, yeah, cream yeah. Cheese, it is that. Yeah. yeah. So and good. boy, the one, and then, now Josh did not send me this food, so I want to officially <laughs> declare, this is not their official photos. This is my photos. This is me having a lunch meeting uh, a few weeks ago. The one with the egg on it. I love that. The kimchi, yeah. I don't uh. see the one here. Oh, I'll show it next picture. This, these are my, so I'm sorry, see the lower left one? I actually started to eat that one, then I realized I needed a photo for my Google stuff. Oh, I have 15 oh, yeah. million views on Google. Uh, I just this Look, this is me having a lunch meeting. I mean, this is serious food. Look at the cookie. I mean, the cookie is ridiculous. Oh, everything You know, and, and then that back thing so in the back good. there has got some goat cheese on it. That's bougie. Everything here is bougie. And bacon jam. Yeah, yeah. Mm. No, ch check his photo. I'm not done. Boom. <sighs> Look at that. The up there salmon. Where can you get salmon and lox? We're going to Seattle next week. We're going to get good stuff there. You can get it right here in Marion. Yeah. And then this left one, the toast, that's like dessert. The I mean, Nutella. it's great. Mm. And you can just see the coffee up there. It, that's not one that he did for the show. That's what they serve regularly. The Every art day, stuff yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I know those aren't your official pictures. I, 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 those are mine. And I just want people to see the food just doesn't look good when you stage it. The food looks good when I go and eat it. Yep. And I like that. So uh, Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., Sunday 1 to 5, and that is Crown Brew Coffee. You want to check that out. Now, we got Josh here, and we are going to unlock the mysteries of what's going on at Crown Brew. So, Josh, give us a little summary, a spotlight on this whole thing that is Crown Brew. I'll throw up this one. This is a good one to start. Give us a breakdown, just an overview, 10,000 feet. Lay us out the whole vision and spectrum. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Crown Brew Coffee Company, we're, we're a craft coffee company, um, really one of the first ones and um, a big one down in our region. Decorated. Yeah, we, we've won best coffee in the region five years straight. I wow. mean, yeah, Pretty five cool. years. It's like, like, I mean, that's like a poker straight. I mean, we're like the Tom Brady of coffee shops. And that's why there. the people at Starbucks so cool. understand. <laughs> <laughs> they go there. Yeah. Starbucks comes there for coffee. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that's you, what that's you. what I'm talking about. Thank you for our studio. We'll, we'll see if we get six. Then we really will be Tom Brady. We're going for the Thanos. We, we want all six. So Excuse me. Is. Pittsburgh's also six. <laughs> that's right. Not, Not this year. year. <laughs> You're right. Well, so uh, we're we're craft coffee company, but really for us, um, the number one thing we are is a hospitality company. We just happen to serve coffee. We happen to serve uh, toasts and things like that. Um, but as like kingdom minded people, the biggest thing we do is we want to bring excellence. We want to bring a place that anyone can feel seen, heard and loved and come and enjoy. And so when, when I look at our company and I'll get into the ethos of it a little bit more, but our number one goal in existing and our mission in existing is to serve people and to love people uh, and to do it in a way that is just honorable to who they are. So I'll really get into that in the ethos. That's really, really. But, but cool. so we, we're right now we've got one location in downtown Marion. We we've had all kinds of opportunities and offers to do other locations and franchise and do a drive through and do all this. Everybody wants to push you. They, they do, you know, and um, you know, I, when I was younger and newer to it, I was like, the more locations, the better. There are some church principles in here. The more I locations, know. the better. The bigger, the better. The more, the better. And it, it was really stretching. And then when I when I got into a kind of a tough season with it, I realized, you know, i got to keep the main thing the main thing. The reason why we're in here is to serve people and be a gift to our community. And sometimes the best way to do that is not to be bigger. It's to be intentional with where you are and what you do. And so we've really resolved, as far as I'm concerned, this is what we do. Yeah. And if anyone ever came along in our organization that had a calling to do something like this, I'd love to give them all the books that I've written, all the guides I've written. Right. Let them go and do it. But for us, it's like we're called to Marion, so we're here to serve the people of Southern Illinois. Amazing drinks, an amazing atmosphere, amazing food. We're not trying to grow. We're not trying to shrink. We're actually just trying to serve and love people and, and be a spot people are proud of. 
Wow, that's amazing. Like it, that. it, and it is. It's a. It's a. I, yeah, let me I like pop this up. The pictures of the inside are just incredible. I, I mean, when you go in, there's a relaxing place. I like the little bar area. If you kind of like the the Christian bar scene, it's not we not drunk and smoke filled, but you can have relationship. The baristas have relationship with people. I see regular chairs. I know that they, they made that. I, There's some serious chairs. Yeah, they are. They're hardcore, and I see people regulars there regularly. Yeah, and I I I, I, I see people that are there almost. One dude that's there every day. I mean, every day. We, we got a we got a couple of people that really live there and hang of, out. And our own Haley, uh, who does a lot of our design for our show, she's at our church. She's there too often. I can't get in there now there without <laughs> having to visit with her. And I love Haley. I do all my meetings with Haley. I do a lot of meetings there. You know, and it's so and I look around and times and there can be three and four other pastors oh, yeah. having Bible study. They're preparing sermons. There's a really peaceful atmosphere. I see. I, I walk in regularly. There's a small. Uh, a, a Bible small study small group going on in there one morning. Yeah, we we've got Bible studies and stuff in there, and it's it's supposed to be a gift for the community. Yeah, right? yeah. I said, I'll, I'll talk about that with the whole ethos of it, but yeah, we, we and we designed and built out the place ourselves. Look at this so, back room. This yeah, back room is fantastic. That's what I see the Bible study back in there sometimes. Oh, yeah. And I've already talked to Josh. We've got a group of men that are wanting to meet regularly. We're going to try to pick a day and start maybe gathering there in the new year. We've yeah. talked about that. And just amazing. Tell us a little bit about the, these drinks here. The, the, your core is coffee. So, and we'll get the ethos behind it. But 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 tell us about the kind of drinks. What are the variety of stuff you're doing? Yeah. So, we, you know, we've got, we're in what's considered the third wave of coffee. Um, that's a... That's a <laughs> Well, okay, let's go through the first wave. What's the first wave? A first wave is coffee. Like, is, is that is, is that like Folgers? No, mom? that's the second wave. So no. that's where we started getting kind of like, let's can it, let's make it instant. Let's no, but your it. mom drink, she drinks Folgers. But but is, is like the home cup of coffee. Is that what is that pre store? That, that's your second wave. Okay, right? okay. so and all then right. that's where all your like Starbucks and Paneras and and McDonald's and Folgers and all this stuff. So third third wave is considered specialty. <laughs> I never knew this stuff. I did not know there were waves in coffee. What's the first wave? The first wave is just like coffee. Coffee exists. It's come out. It, it's coffee. just a because yeah. it's coffee goes back then forever. The second wave. Yeah. Oh yeah. On coffee beans. The history of since, coffee is since thousands since of years old. So South the, America, Africa. Second wave is brands. So the, in the second wave, it became like more like the consumer package. quick, like Folgers, easy, a accessible. can of Folgers, yeah, yeah, Sanka, yeah. Okay. different products. Yeah, right. there's guys that could talk to it a lot more than that. We, we live in the third wave and what the third wave is specialty. And so everything we do is intentional brewing. And so we're weighing everything, timing everything, our temperatures are regulated. So when we're, when we're doing this, our goal is we want to make you the, the same cup of coffee the same way every single time. And I, I, I will say to you, I rarely, if ever, I don't ever remember a cup of my coffee unless I changed beans yeah. being different and, and yeah. as far because as, it it's you almost got a chemistry to it. Yeah. And so that's what I created a lot of our own methods for doing things. There's a lot of ways to do it, but most of those guys, they don't like to share stuff. We, we don't mind. So I came up with a lot of our own versions or takes on brewing methods, but the idea to best serve people is you want to serve them something consistent. And so like when we're doing coffee with like latte art, all that, the only way you can achieve latte art is having fresh beans, brewed the right way with milk steamed at the right temperature poured the right way so that's and why so, your mom's Folgers won't do that in the morning no it no. won't like so there's so much people look at it and it's not just the barista and like their skill it's every it's the intentionality all the way up it's and the so, froth on there that's all because of the all bean of and the fresh and how you steam it and and the temperature it ends up at so like all of our coffee drinks so what we do is because we have really good signature like coffee even the roasting process is really intentional is when we're adding flavors and other things to it because people like coffee that way we're not trying to hide the coffee flavor we're trying to find things that partner with the beans that we're putting in wow and, and so everything is about intentionality like i said we weigh everything we time everything we measure everything we drill our guys on it i have like a, a 18 or 20 page brewing guide that i've written over the last seven years it has become like our you know bible for how we do I, I, everything. I see that you're using weight scales temperature controls yeah, uh, everything is is there a is coffee have an ideal temperature to, to brew at yeah you've got to brew between 195 to 205 degrees uh we tend to r run everything right about two to 203 and it, it's all chemistry just for the record for those of you at home, I'm a I'm a barbecue expert, yeah. and that's what I do, and that's the temperature for brisket. Yeah, it is. You got finished temperature is one ninety five two hundred five. You got to break two hundred one so that the it can actually begin to separate, right? And yeah, on the brisket. Well, well, yeah, on, on pork on pork it's one eighty five to one ninety five, but on yeah. brisket the collagen breaks down exactly. between one ninety five and two hundred five. And and so the same thing, you know, when you get cold brew, the reason it's like a twenty hour process, it's chemistry. Heat speeds up solutions, right? So hot water means three minute brew time. 
cold water is 20 hour brew time. So there's a spectrum, right? Uh -huh. But one of the things that, you know, if you have your home brew systems, your Keurig, your Mr. Coffee, one of the things they miss on is they aren't regulating their temperature very well. Yeah. So if it's under, but they're brewing in three minutes, what's happening is you're not getting enough heat to pull all the flavor out. Uh, and so the little things like making sure your water's hot enough completely changes it. Wow. It's it's the difference between having a brisket that came out at yeah. 165 because oh, yeah. it's, it's safe now. It's There's tight. no bacteria. Yeah, it's legal to eat a it's while. It's legal to eat, but yeah. we haven't actually broke it down in a way that's satisfying and and like craft. Oh, you know? absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I cooked some brisket the other day for an event at 203 and there's not a piece of it left in this building. No, there were four it, prime. It it's perfect. People said, you know, how come you can do so well? I said, well, I, I just follow certain rules. So you're doing the same thing. The with exact coffee. same thing. Exact so same thing. So you've got the bean and you're saying, I've got a water temperature. I've got a time and it's got to happen during this time. Same that's, with smoking barbecue. I've got a target temperature. There, there is a craft to it though. So many yeah. people will do it. They just don't, it, there's a craft to the temperature of the wood and that. So you're yep. saying the same thing is true. So there's a cra like, yeah, craft barbecue. There's craft. It's this. craft coffee, and, and then that's there's what's considered then craft coffee. What's sad about this is this is my son here, and this is his business here, and he's got this craft coffee, which is delicious. I mean, it's perfectly brewed, but his mom drinks Folgers every that's morning. Swill. That's swill, garbage swill. I mean, just and then I'm a part Folgers of John Will's. I'm, I'm a part of John Will's barbecue, sometimes. three time world championship <laughs> barbecue. I, I worked and was trained there in the in the heart of Memphis how to cook barbecue. And then Beth will say, I'm so disappointed that Dairy Queen quit having their barbecue, barbecue sandwich. Oh, sandwich. That oh, garbage in a heart. in a butter dish. Oh. You know, you get a butter dish frozen. Side of and it just broke heart. So my, my wife breaks my heart by eating the butter dish barbecue broke and the Folgers. Heart. Son, she's just not a craft woman, but no. we love you what you're doing. So so, so so you got the drinks. <laughs> what, now, now, you've got the coffee drinks. Then you've got... Uh, er, Almost everything you guys do that's hot can be cold. Yeah. I, I love that. But we, it's but not the same. That, that's what's interesting. Is it's a totally different drink. It's a totally, but, but it's all crafted. So like there's principles. And um, I kind of cracked the code on how all of that stuff works. So when we're making things, espresso and cold brew, completely different. You can ice it. You don't have to. It's all over the place. What it comes down to is, um, and and it's like, how, how much do you care? What are we drinking? Okay, right? what, what are we drinking here? This, does, is, this is good. What does, is this? Coffee have to be hot before it can be cold? No. So it can, can, but it doesn't have to be. You can cold brew coffee. He's so cold brewing. Cold brewing. That's, that's cold brew. That's, that's, co that's cold brew. This is delicious. And so what you're doing with cold brew is, you know, if it takes three minutes at 205 degrees to extract your coffee, it's going to extract slower with cold water. Right. But what's going to happen if it's slowly coming out? What's the difference between, you know, um, a piece of meat that you cook in two minutes versus one that you cook in 20 hours. It, tender versus it's the tenderness yeah, and, and what, what's happening. So with, I used to think cold brew was just no. hot coffee. The acid, like, there's almost, there's no, if you, that's if, ice if, coffee. if you yeah. hate no. ice, if you hate the yeah. acidic taste, I, yes, there's I none I used here. to think it was just hot coffee with, no, no, no. Ice. So that's the difference. So a cold that's brew, and this is kind of how we started our company, okay. is we would literally soak it in room temperature water for 20 hours. Because of that, it's more tender. So it's 70% less acidic, a little bit like different. It's different okay, flavors so of body. Like if you that. gripe about drinking, yeah, if, exactly. you, if you dry, gripe about drinking coffee because it's too acidic, you get heartburn, you've got to try cold brew. It's smooth. It's a totally different world. Yes. You know, and, and it is less well, oh, so call, you know, take it to barbecue pork. You can take pork. You can have the shoulder. You can have the rib. You can have pulled, shredded. Right. You know what you pick: bacon, ham, right. all of it. It's all the same pig, but depending on where you cut it, how you cook it, how you prep it, what, how you cross brine grain it or not, right, makes it so bigger. So coffee's the same way. Is you can start with this one Columbia bean we have here, and you can you know do it cold for twenty hours at oat milk and vanilla, and that's what that is. Well, I'm or just you telling you, it, oat milk and vanilla. I'm telling you, this is, and I had a white chocolate one earlier. Yeah, uh, this is like YooHoo, but better. This is like <laughs> YooHoo. Those of you that are my age, do do they still have you? Not like you. No, no, no. I know. I'm I'm not, I'm I'm debasing you. Who? Uh, no, I'm debasing. No, no, no. I'm going to debase him and say no. You who was when we grown up. It was like yeah. You, you, I, listen, no. You who when I was young, you go in and you grab one, and it was one drinker. You just put her down. You could no, never take a, sips of you. This makes you who look like a joke. This is like, this is like creamy, deliciousy. This it's hard. Very you can chug milk. this. This is delicious. So if, if you're like, I can't do coffee, you need to go to the cold brew. 
It is fan. And you got this by jugs, don't you? You yeah. didn't bring it, but this is in like half oh, gallon. Oh, yeah, the jugs are in the yeah, fridge. Yeah, this is yeah. half gallon jugs, man. You can bring this home, and ha we have it in the refrigerator all the time. But if you don't want the cream, you can do just the, the coffee, the yeah, black coffee. Yeah, black coffee. And so it's just like you start with the base, it's coffee, and then how you prepare it, what you're adding to it. All these things are just bringing out different flavor and stuff in it. What's what's this drink to the left up here that's got layers on it? You know, the, the Oh, that one is uh, the Rocket Man. So that's espresso. That's you name. like yeah, that one. I yeah. love that one. So that's espresso with milk and honey and condensed milk and cinnamon and so at that one we just didn't mix it yet and uh it looks yeah, it's, it's a layered it's like a layered drink you know so that's yeah. what you're doing when you come so up with good. these like we do signature drinks every quarter we and you change it up spring, based on the season fall. and we we do new ones every year because what we're thinking is like what's you know like in in, in the um like winery world and like craft cocktail world, they're always bringing all these new ideas. It's like the same base stuff. They're always creating new ways of enjoying it. So we kind of push ourselves in that same way where it's like we're making syrups in house from scratch based on something that we had somewhere and we're like, I want peach something. Yeah. So how do I get that to come alive? And you, we literally have a, a whole team of, um, or we have someone on our team who at all times is like doing R and D production. Um, she's doing like sauce development. And so, you know, if you're in the winter menu, we're already talking about spring flavors. We're messing around while we're there trying to create new experiences based on flavors we've had somewhere else and fell in love with. Um, the vampire weekends, like one of the most popular ever. Uh, yeah. I, drink. I love I, it. I had horchata somewhere and I'm like, I think I can make this better. Yeah. And so I made up my own version of horchata and I'm like, I think you're making it in-house horchata. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everything we do is in-house so and, yeah. and it just creates an experience. What, what if I know, I know what's cool about this. Cause I, I go there a lot in the summer when it's hot and stuff and go, I don't really want coffee. Even cold brew. It's a little heavy. Yeah. And what's great is you guys, if you don't like coffee and you're say you're a tea drinker, yep. you've got home runs on the tea. So we, oh, we it's yeah. the same thing. It's the principles. And so we've got teas and lemonades that we make from yep. scratch. From like scratch. Three to four ingredient lemonades, real lemons, water, sugar, real fruit. And oh, for a while there, your sister was coming up from Memphis and taking and it home, taking jugs of it home yeah. because people down there wanted it. It's just, it's what's crazy is there's nothing that we do that someone else couldn't do. We just care more than most people. And do. you took the right. time to figure out the ratios and the percentages. And, and then you just obey it. So it's. Right. It's really simple. And, and, and then you got to get the fresh fresh ingredients, the things you need, yeah. need to make it. Uh, let, let's get into this, and we'll kind of we'll kind of wrap up this first part of the episode. Uh, we want to get into your ethos to kind of wrap up this section, and then we're going to come back in a little bit. And in our next part, we want to get there's some backstory that you want to hear how Crown yeah. Brew got to be because there's a there's a there's a whole ministry world behind this and we want to hear about the challenges of running your business uh, in two different times. So I think. People out there that think about starting a Christian business can learn a lot from what you've learned. I yeah. think the reason why we're doing these spotlights is not just to show Crown Brew, but I think other people that are looking at their own business brands and things like this can learn from what you've done and they can look at whether they're starting, uh, whether they're going to start a pizza place or something else or yep. some other uh, experiment, they can learn. So there's some principles you've got. We're going to get into that in the next one and take a look at what's happening next with, with, with Crown Brew. But the ethos of your whole idea, and, and by I mean ethos is what's the heart really behind it what's the what what was the what's the goal the reason what are you trying to create in this place what's the spirit of it yeah um what do we got like five minutes yeah yeah cool so right, give me five I'm, I'm gonna give what i think is the biggest piece of gold that i've come to realize and if anyone is in any version of hospitality restaurants um whatever product where you're serving people whether it's like i said restaurant um like bar cafe whatever it is um this is the principle I teach my guys every time. So you guys know when you have guests come over to your house, right? Right. It's different than when you have family come over. Right. When you have guests come over for the first time, what do you do? You, you spend the entire day cleaning. Deep cleaning. And everyone right now, you've got, you know, your your three meals in mind right now. If I said, I'm, I'm coming over to your house, you've never had me over. Yep. What are you going to cook for me? We've all got those three meals in mind. What are they? They're the best meals the best that we've ever made. Yeah. Exactly. And so, um, you know, if, if I'm coming to your house for the first time, you have an extremely clean house. You've got, you know, one of your three best meals ever. Everything's in order. You've showered, you're kept. You know, it's a beautiful experience. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you're trying to like show an impression that you matter i care that you're here Good so i'm taking the time to like be ready and show that you right. value 
you value me, right? When family come over, you're just like, ah, oh, yeah, jump in the fridge, get whatever you want. I'm yeah. still got my pajamas on. And and so what I tell people is that when you're in the hospitality industry, um, you don't live in the familiarity of being family. You treat every day and every single person as if they're the guests coming into your house. And uh-huh. this is where a lot of people in hospitality miss it is they begin to get comfortable and familiar and they begin to stop looking at their cafe or their restaurant or their products as if it's being experienced for the first time by people. So, so you're basically That's saying really good that, I like that this, you know, people will talk about, you know, I can, I can brew a dollar cup of coffee at home. Sure. But here you're not going for, for just a coffee. You're going for the experience for the boutique. So here's, here's, here's a boutique move to Here's this. the key that goes next level. And this is one of our big secrets. So um, when you're in hospitality, see, this isn't about us. It's experience. It's actually about our customers. And so here's where you go even further, okay? So now I say, I don't care if the line's to the door on Saturday, you treat every customer in that line the same. Why? Because just because I knew you and I've served you a hundred times, the person behind you is watching how I treat you. Yeah. And so that matters because that's speaking to it. Now take it one further. We we're, when we get in the holiday season is when we really see this. So you get regulars and they're, you know, in their forties or fifties and they're a little older maybe than you would think are hanging out in the craft coffee crowd, but they're your regulars and you love them. You know each other by name. So guess what happens every holiday season? They start rolling in there with their college age kids with, you know, their grandkids. They want to show them how in. cool they are. The, yeah. yeah. And, and you want to know what tells them how cool they Grandpa's are. Grandpa's hip. When grandpa rolls in and one of the baristas goes, Hey, Jack, good to see you. Is this one of your grandkids? And immediately, what does it do? It actually honors Jack. You know, it honors yeah. you. And what it says is, oh, wow, this is cool. So in the same way, when you think about the meals you cook for a guest, if I came to visit you in your town and I'm not from there, you already have the two or three restaurants in mind that you're like, yep. I'm going to take them. Yep. Why? Because what you're doing when you're taking people to a restaurant is you're actually not talking about the restaurant. You're talking about you. You're saying this is my taste, my level, my style. Because what, yeah. what what your kids thought when they rolled in, they thought you were going to the diner cafe, yep. and Flo was going to bring you a cup of coffee. Yeah, we're going to go to the local coffee yeah. shop. Yeah, but they don't realize yeah. it's the award winning cool one where they know Grandpa by name. Yeah, and so what we see as, and this is where we really play it up for our customers that are regulars, especially when they're older. We extra love on them when their grandkids are in town because what's happening is we now get to serve them, and by extension, we're serving their family. Wow. It's like when we. Do with catering for weddings or something. You're their Sunday bass or their, their special event. And, and so the way that we treat them and their guests is actually a rep, an extension of them. So when we were doing like wedding catering kind of before COVID and stuff, um, I would look at, um, I would look at my team before we'd go serve after the wedding. And I'd say, guys, everything that we do today is an extension of the bride and groom. This isn't about our brand. Our uh, brand doesn't exist now. Right. We actually are here on behalf of the bride and groom, so we need to treat every one of their guests the way that the bride or groom would treat them, the way the father of the bride would treat them. You're their them. honored guest today. We're, exactly. And yeah. so we treat every day in our cafe where, and this is where most people in my industry really mess up. You guys go to Nashville. You yep. see the way that the cafe, they think you're so lucky to come and get experience. We us. let you in. You're next. Yeah, next. And you're, yeah exactly. What yeah. we do is we're the opposite. Where We're like, we're so lucky that you came to see us today. Right. So we want to make you feel seen and heard and loved. So that's my like gold to like. And you're making and, and, and what people need to understand is you're making everything to order. So yes. so if you go to a high like a like a low end restaurant, they've got like uh, heat lines in the back. Your yeah. food's already ready. They slop it on things, send it out. Nothing wrong with that. That's a blue plate. Uh, we do that at the House of Hope. Yeah. It's, it's done lovingly, and you're getting a blue plate special. When you go to a fancier restaurant, they're firing your dishes per table per yep. plate to order. That's what a real chef does. Yep. You know, a Ramsey or whatever. Yeah. They fire it to order. You're actually firing everybody's drinks. You're making their lemonades Every to drink, order. Drink everything. We're weighing it to order. Um, there's a couple things that are batched because that's better to serve. No, people. no, I understand that. But no, it's it's and but it's being more poured that, to the order. When someone comes in and we we see them be a little nervous because they're risking and they're trying us and we're not their normal brand. We begin to look at them immediately and say, hey, we're making this to order. Man, would you come down, talk to Noah as he's making this? When you get done, we take a sip for Noah and give him some feedback. He'd love to make that sweeter for you or a little bit stronger. We want every single person to walk in, especially because when you get into craft anything, craft coffee, craft barbecue, craft anything at all, you walk in thinking whoever's here is the expert and I'm not. And so how we serve people that come in is we begin to say, hey, we're here to serve you. We're here to break down the barrier of being pretentious and being snotty. We want you to have good experience today. And coffee at the end of the day is about pleasure. It's about enjoyment. And yes, you can go get a common cup at any 
five and dime or any yeah. anything, but to go get one crafted for you for that's you, fresh. It'll that's be not the been same on for three way. hours, yeah. but 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 it's made with fresh ingredients, so, fresh beans. So when we get someone who gets a new regular, like you've got a drink that's not on our menu that you right. always get. I tell people, I said, because we weigh everything. I said, hey, if you like what I made you, like say it's extra sweeter, or stronger than normal. I said, give me your phone, open your notes, and I'm gonna type this formula in. All you got to do is show this to any barista. Who, who works here and they're going to know what to do. And so they do this for our customers. Oh, yeah. If they have a really funny order or like funny anythings. And think about the level of in that you feel when you walk into a cafe and say, hey, this is mine. You know what that means, this right? This is mine, right? And, oh, yeah, I got you. I got you. Yeah. yeah. And I so love it's, that. it's getting out of this mindset of come and see us. And it's like, we're so glad that you came in. How do we serve you today? And and if more people would get in that, we win awards for being the best, not because we're like, come see how good we are, but because we're constantly treating everyone coming in like they're our first time visitor. So we're putting our best out. So when people are saying they're the best, it's not because we're so cool and awesome. We, you know, we go through employees like any other place, people come and go, new jobs and stuff. It's not like we've secured the best people. We have the best culture and the best principles which yields the best experience. Wow. Wow. I remember when you first opened and, and it was at a different location, but your, um, the counter where you prepared everything was right there. So you had no choice, but to stand there. Yeah. We want people to watch. Yeah. They want them to see it all. And it was so cool. And people were so intrigued with that and they didn't mind at all that they had to wait and watch you do that. And that there was an entire line of people waiting you know, I remember everybody was just talking. There was always all this hubbub Community, going on yeah. and everything. And, That's it. And it was a great atmosphere, and it still is. Yep. It still it's is. It's fantastic. There's fantastic, fantastic spirit presence there. As we wrap up this, we're going to come back, and we're going to get the back story. You're going to get the chance to see how, how I think God's in all the story. It's been great. It's a great yeah. place. Spiritually, it's a great place for me to go as a pastor if I just want to study the word, if I want to meet with somebody. Uh, to go someplace where... Um, the people know your name and it's not cheers or a beer, but, but it, it's a place where, where the presence of the Lord is in the place. Yet yeah, it's not overly Christian or anything. You don't have to be a Christian to go there or anything, but you can just feel that the place is filled with love and, and, and you can see the ethos is there before we do that. I, I do know you've got on the table here. You've got, you, you have product. Oh, so, yeah. so tell me a little bit about the merch. You have, you have a, uh, a cooler, what do you call that? A, a chiller? As yeah, you come like in. So reach in it's not just order. You can go in and get some reach in stuff. Yeah. And you've also got some merch. Tell us a little bit about that before we wrap up this part one. Yeah. So we've got fresh roasted coffee every week, fresh roasted stuff, different origins, all single origin, all direct trade partnership uh, with our roaster. They actually know the farmers who are producing this stuff. So that's all. It's ethically sourced, bought at the right price, like everything about it, like the guys are aware. So we're always rotating different fun merch through. Um, you know, all that stuff is just good because we don't, if we have good coffee and good drinks, we don't get cheap stuff. We always get stuff that's nice that people be proud to give us gifts and whatnot. So we've got our ready to drink stuff at the cafe. Um, yeah, we're just always rotating little things through like that. I'll say, so we got crown brew coffee. You're on the North side of the square, square yeah. around the back side. So go up the pizza alley or come around to the next street on union street. We actually have a lot of parking. That's why we you have like a to lot of parking of, back uh, the there. Square. Yeah. They're all, they got a lot of parking. Ew. Just go to the other side of the North side, the other side of the building, huge amount of parking there. Uh, check it out. Remember, if you get them, there's a line. Go to Crown Brew Coffee right there. Just order, on, yeah. order on the app. Yep. It's it's great. Um, beautiful place. Go check it out. Uh, you're open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Sundays 1 to 5. Always check that. They change a little bit seasonally. So go to their online site, yep. crownbrewcoffee.com. Yep. Make sure check the, the times and all that because seasonally it, things can change. Oh, yeah. But uh, great stuff there. You can kind of see what's going on. And then remember quarterly those drinks and, and some of the foods change and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, every quarter we rotate our menus, pastries, yeah. everything. And we're, we're going to come back in the next episode. We'll get we'll talk a little bit more about the food. We'll talk a little bit more about the pastries. And we'll get deeper into the backstory. How how did the Lord get you here and, and, and the challenges in the next move. So we're going to be back in part two, the backstory of the challenges and the next moves. Uh, we're... Go to onthedoc.org to find out more about our show and email at info at onthedoc.org. If you want to find out something more about Crown Brew, you can reach out to us this way. We'll get you directed there. Or again, you can just go find this out at, at crownbrewcoffee.com. Go to YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, and watch our show. You see our other partners right there, and we'd love to hear your feedback. But we want to hear how you like Crown Brew. Tell us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Telegram, Getter, and we'd love to hear from that. We'll pass that on, and we'll share that. Find out if you've been there. Let us know if you've been there. Send us a picture or something. We'll use some of your pictures in a few 
future episode and hit subscribe, like, notify, and share with other people not only about this episode, but tell them how to find Crown, Crown Brew. They're going to love it. If they're, even if they're not from this area, uh, we can maybe arrange for them to order something. Go to Patreon and become a partner or sponsor of the show. We'd love to have you. And don't forget, if you want to get that Faraday bag, go to slnt.com, use promo code OTD, or you can use our special link there, www.slnt.com backslash discount backslash OTD. It's in our description for the show today, and we'd love to have you go there. You can also go to onthedoc.org, and you can find those links at the donate link for uh, my Patreon and also for our affiliate program. And we want to invite you out if you don't have a church home of your own. Community Faith Church, Sundays 10 o'clock, Wednesday 6.30. Go to coftv.com to find out more about that as well. Josh, it's been good to have you in this part one episode. We're going to be back in part two to go much deeper. Uh, Mother Beth, you got anything final? Mother Beth, Colt, thank you for leading us in this production today. We'll be back with part two of this. Don't miss it. I'm Pastor Troy, and you've been on the dock. We'll see you soon.